Hello everyone, welcome to today's video, which is going to show you a powerful GitHub project, Discovery Navigation. This is Johnny, a network security guy. If you watched my previous video, I had presented you a couple of solutions to build your own bookmark navigation website or create your free own web application dashboard using GitHub project. And I did bookmark navigation, which is discovery navigation video one year ago to introduce this project. It got some new updates two months ago. I think it's a good time to refresh this video and reintroduce this project to you again. What is discovery navigation project? Basically, this is a pure, static, but powerful navigation website. You can use it as your bookmarks collection website, which is I'm using, and also you can create your web application dashboard, similar like I introduced here before. It has nice backend to managing or online editing your collections. It also supports a different views, support different devices as well. It also has English version now. You can switch between Chinese and English. The most interesting for me to like this project is you can deploy it on the GitHub pages. It's completely free and it's easy to do. I already showed you in my previous video, but I would like to refresh it again and show you the new backend they created. It also support to import your bookmark. And the upgrading process is listed here, but you may want to back up more couple of files, which I'm gonna mention it in my video. Other than that, let's just start it. And let me show you step by step. As usual, I have a blog post to describe the whole process step by step, which you can find out the link from this video description. I do have a demo site to show you how it looks like. This one I created a year ago. This is a new one I recently created based on the update they made two months ago. Take a look and compare it. They look similar, but the back end, they have a new one right now. The first step, let's fork this current project. It already received 1.3K stars and has been forked 652 times. So we're gonna create new fork but don't select copy the main branch only. So then we have all branches. That's what we need did when we creating our pages. Our second step is to generate token. Why we need a token? Since we need to save the information in to our GitHub repository. So we need to have a secret. So we can, the action can take this secret as authentication method to write the information into your repository, which is your database file, a text file sitting in a GitHub repository. I'm gonna generate a new token through the settings. Um, you go to the bottom, there's developer settings, personal access token, generate new token. You also can generate a new token through a classic way. There's uh, no explanation date, so which I am using since uh, that project is only for me. So that's the option here. You can generate a no explanation token. Um, basically choose everything here. Mm 
you don't have to choose all, but uh, to make things simple, easy, I didn't test it, so I just choose all for this token. Give a name. So this is important, you need to keep this and save it on my notepad. You should save it in a safety place each time when you need to modify your backend configurations or new uh, collection for your navigation URL, then you need this code. So we created, we then we go to our repository again. So we have our nav, discovery, navigation, um, repository, settings, go to settings again. So you see the secret. So action secrets, we need to uh, put that secret in. So basically, token secret, that's the one we just created. So we add secret. So the action gonna use in this secret to write or edit your information in your repository. After this step down, you just need to enable your actions. So you know uh, when the workflow on be run on this fork repository, but we know I understand my workflows, go ahead and enable them. So it's enabled it, go to settings, pages. Um, here is a source, it said deploy from a branch. So we need to enable GitHub pages. So the branch will be main. Have to save. Here is a good point. Um, we can custom domain, um, but if we need to put the custom domain here, we need to do extra two steps. One step is go to your settings, your account settings. You need to authorize that domain first. Go to pages. So we need to verify this domain. So for example, if you want to do the 51 sec, Org. You need to add it to this domain, and then you need to create that text txt record in your DNS, and then put it into the well this code as the value of txt record. Then you can do verify. After that step done, you can go back to your project settings. So you can put your, for example, you can put. Uh, navigation as your domain you can save it so that's how i did for my nav dot org and uh, link dot org these two website here but for now we don't need that we just need to use the default https this domain to access to it Let's look at actions. Um, since we enabled the actions and we triggered some changes, so the action will be automatically run that workflow. It's creating the same name and the pages has been built and the deployment, the changes still ongoing since we delete the same name. So any changes you made to this website you have to de deploy it, it will take five minutes to get it done. So we will wait a bit and to see it, but at the same time we can see the website. The website should be up and running since it has been deployed once. So you can go to your pages with the website. It's fully up and running. At this moment, it only shows your readme, um, but if we one of shows our real website, you need to change a branch to gh-pages and then save it. In that case, they will show the gh-pages branch information to you, not the readme information. Right now, we only should see the readme on the main branch. So let's refresh it again. Uh, it will need to deploy so let's wait five minutes and come back to check. Then I'm gonna show you the back end. After you see the pages build and the deployment has been completed with this green check mark, 
you can go back to your settings pages and um, visit the site again so now you can see it's the website they still have some Chinese here because by default it's a Chinese version so we need to change it to get into the back end it's simple just change the last word to the system so now you need to enter your token don't worry about those Chinese we're gonna change it because by default it's using Chinese copy token and paste in and put in here so we will get successfully authenticated then you will get in the back end the first thing you need to do if you know if you don't know the Chinese change from here default language to English and then you can deploy save it deploy it but before that let's make a little bit of changes to navigation so which can make it's easy to read in the future so we made some changes in the back and we want to save it so let's uh, say yes and uh, synchronize the data to remote github repository but we will get this request field with status code 4 for the reason why we get it there's a one manual settings we have to do in our repository there's a configuration file we need to change add it so we need to change this URL to the URL we have because we're gonna make using that token to change the settings change the database file for our own repository not the authors so let's do commit change don't forget once we commit change it will take five minutes to get the actions to update this configuration file so there's a workflow so when you change the code they're gonna update in it so we wait five minutes to let it finish then we were gonna try to do the save again those two workflows has been completed and now let's try to save it we need to refresh our page we may lose our changes let's give it to English uh, other changes we will do it later on the first thing we're gonna make sure it's saved so it's saved successfully let's go back to action so another workflow been triggered so we need to wait another five minutes to let those changes taking into effect after five minutes of waiting two workflows completed and we can go back to original web page and then refresh it now you can see the website title has been changed the categories is a built-in URLs and those bookmarks so those are still with Chinese you may want to change it but in the back end it's all been changed to English so you will have a chance to change your logo and you can change those SEO information and the foot HTML and the, all the background even banner so those are customizable if you want to change the tag settings you can do it here the website management is the place you can back up your all URLs you added in which is your website you can choose the three tiers category and then add the website under the third tier third category as I mentioned there are two back end here so one is system but if you want to do admin you will get this old fashion 
admin portal. So there you can do some basic settings as well, but uh, it's not that much system settings you can change from here. So there's two backend, one is admin, one is system. In the system, you have tag settings change, and also you can have search engine change. For the old backend, you have to do it directly from the GitHub repository. Let's come back to my backup files you need to back up. If you need to do upgrade, you got the new update from original, so you want to pull those uh, updates in. So based on the settings here, you will need to back up data folders and the navigation. So let's take a look there. You will need to back up this configuration file, nav configuration TS, which I will change our git repository URL and also the whole data folder you may want. This database and also tag and other settings you may want to change it. From my point of view, you may still want to back up the source code if you have any changes. For example, if you change the index file, you change anything here, you may want to put uh, some Google analytical code here before the header. And you may want to put something in the body. It's a good place you put in here, but you may want to back it up before you upgrade it. So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, you had a chance to create your own navigation website. Let me know if you have any questions. If you like it, give me a thumb up. Thank you for watching. See you next time.